Yo, what's poppin' guys? Kai Zerka here with another Genshin Impact video, and today I just wanted to make a sort of last-minute video about which banner I recommend pulling on, right? As you can tell, the Xiao banner is shortly coming to a close, so soon you'll no longer be able to summon our beautiful, vigilant Yaksha, right? Honestly, <laughs> my favorite character in the game. I'm a little bit biased, but I'll be as objective as I possibly can for this video. So, let's just get further ado. So, of course, we're going to be comparing Xiao... Kaching and Hu Tao, and why you may want each character. Now, Xiao, right? Xiao's main role, he's obviously in Nemo, no, Polearm, his main role is going to be a hyper carry DPS. Now, what does that mean? A hyper carry DPS, that means he's going to be spending most of the time on the field. So, in your team, you're basically going to be switching to him, popping his ultimate, and then you're going to be spending lots and lots of time. You're going to spend the entire duration of your ultimate on the field because if you switch off of him, he loses his ultimate ability. So you have to get all your energy back up again to get in his ultimate, and that is where you want him, because that is where he does the most damage. So that means the way you play Xiao is, of course, spending your time basically building up your ultimate, using your ultimate, swapping back out of Xiao to build up your ultimate again, and then use the ultimate rinse and repeat. You pretty much want to always have Xiao in his ultimate as much as possible. You want your uptime to be very, very high, because that is how you're going to get a maximum DPS out of him. Otherwise, he's, he's a bit mediocre if you're not in your ultimate, because again, the balance is pretty much assuming you're in your ultimate 24-7, right? So, that's how you play Xiao. You have to, again, constantly, constantly get energy. He does have energy issues, which I have talked about in my Xiao guide, but if you run him with an Anemo battery, or if you have a lot of energy recharge, that can be mitigated. I use Sucrose with Xiao, and he plays just fine with no energy recharge substats, and a, you know, death match where he doesn't have energy recharge on his weapon either. He plays just fine with Sucrose, right? So if you can get a good battery, then his energy is not much of a problem at all, especially if you get a good battery and gets lucky on some substats, right? So his his issues can be mitigated. Another common complaint I see about Xiao is that he's apparently not great at single target bosses, which in my opinion is a bit untrue. Yeah, he is stronger, right? He is stronger in AoE situations, okay? Absolutely. AoE, he is much stronger than your single target. But single target wise, he can still one shot some bosses, right? If you saw my Xiao Gat again, you know he could completely melt some bosses. And this is with a four star weapon, right? A four star weapon, melt, melt a dragon boss, right? Melt Cryo Regis Fine, absolutely destroy some bosses, okay? The only boss he has trouble with, of course, is the wolf boss. And that is new well, because it's immune to Nemo damage, and that's his main gimmick, right? You could, in theory, <laughs> cheese it, you know, out with physical Xiao, but physical Xiao, honestly, is, is, is subpar, right? If you're gonna play Xiao, you're gonna wanna go in Nemo Xiao, so... It's, that's just how it is, okay? But, yeah, Xiao, he's a very, very, very powerful character. In my opinion, I would consider him busted, right? He, he does have drawbacks, so he's balanced, but he still can output some crazy damage, even in single target, even though his AoE is better. So that, that's, that's, that's Xiao in a nutshell, right? The next character I want to talk about is Kaching. Now, Kaching is a bit of an interesting character. She is very versatile, right? But her damage is a bit lacking, okay? Now, she's a waifu tier character, right? She's definitely a waifu tier. So if that's what you care about, you go for her. Same with Xiao. If Xiao is your husbando, go for him, absolutely. Kaching's your waifu, go for her. And if Hu Tao is your waifu, go for her. It's pretty simple, right? If you like a character a lot, if you simp for them, absolutely go for them. That's the character that's going to make you the most happy. You could always build your team around that character. Because at the end of the day, you want to play the character, main the character that you like the most. So whichever character you like the most, absolutely pick that, right? But... I used to be a Kaching main, right? So I kind of know a bit of the bit of the good, bad, and ugly with her. Now, the good to start off with is that, again, she's versatile. You could run her as an Electro character. You could run her as a physical character. You could run her, you could run her as Cryo if you use Chong Yun with her and convert her damage to Cryo. You could even run her as a Pyro character if you run her with Bennett C6. It's, it's crazy the amount of possibilities you have Kaching. So if you want a character... You could pretty much work as a DPS for any scenario. Say you're, you know, wanting to fight the Crowage sign, but we want to switch to the Pyro, or you're wanting to fight this enemy, or do this one. You know, like different, you know, domains have different strengths and weaknesses. You could switch her out, switch out her build to fit any situation. So if you invest in her, get her all the way up to level 80 or 90, then it's not going to be a waste because you could use her in so many different situations. She's basically like four different characters almost, the way you could build her, right? So, it's, she's a very versatile character. That's that's her main strength, right? And that's the best thing about Kaching. Now, the weaknesses, right? Well, again, her damage is lackluster. 
she's not going to be, you know, doing some crazy, crazy DPS. She can do really well, you know, if you really invest into her, you get a lot of good substats on her. You could do well with physical or electro if you do physical, you know, if you have the Aquila Favonius, then she could do pretty crazy damage, right? Assuming you have a five-star weapon on her, of course, right? She is decent with a four-star weapon, like I like to use a black sword on her. I have a video as well talking about the black sword versus the lion's roar for her electro build, right? But yeah, so she's she can do decent damage, but unless you have a five star on her, she's not gonna be like superb. She's not gonna be amazing. She's she's an A tier character, right? Which is still good, but she's not an S tier like Xiao, okay? So keep that in mind. If you're gonna pull for Qing, just know that she's not going to be crazy overpowered or anything of that sort. She's she's good, she's solid, she can get the job done, right? Those are the things. Those are those are her strengths. But again, she's not she's not gonna be putting out some crazy numbers. No no, no crazy numbers. But the, another good thing about her is that she is more flexible than Xiao when it comes to teams. Because Xiao is very particular about the type of teams he needs. Like you could use a lot of different characters with Xiao, but the thing is you have to oh, think about who you're using. Like for you know, of course, like I said before, Xiao needs an anemo battery to, you know, basically perform adequately, right? But Kaching, she doesn't need that. She doesn't need like a certain battery or this or that. She doesn't have like energy problems in, in that sense, okay? But the thing is, if you're running Electro Kaching, you're probably going to want characters like Sing Chio with her, right? Sing Chio is amazing with Kaching because he provides Electro Charge to your enemies. So if you're doing Electro Kaching, Sing Chio is amazing. If you're running Cryo Kaching, then of course Chong Yun is necessary, etc., etc. And if you're using Physical Kaching, you're still going to need Cryo characters like Kaya or Ganyu, and you know, of course, to you know, get Superconduct. So she is dependent, but those are more reaction dependent, not character dependent like Xiao is. So keep that in mind as well. One other weakness, uh, kind of more of a petty annoyance I have of her, is that her main playstyle is basically spamming charge attacks. If you don't want to just sit there and spam charge attacks all day, if you think that's boring, then don't pull for Kaching because she is charged attack city, right? Another th downside with charge attacks is that, well, they knock enemies back, which is annoying because you're constantly having to sprint after the enemy you just hit so you hit an enemy and knocks them back you have to sprint towards them you wasted more stamina and the thing with kaching is you're always out of stamina because your charge attack that uses stamina then a, you know knock them back sprint charge attack all of that you're out of stamina so that could be a bit annoying right but that that that's enough talking about kaching right next character i want to talk about is hutao which of course we don't have so I'm just going to use Xiangling here as kind of a placeholder, so you just have something visual to look at while I'm talking about it, right? Hu Tao is the character that I'm going to talk the least about because, of course, her stuff is subject to change. So I'm going to talk more about broad playstyle of her and not anything specific because, again, you know, we don't have our hands on her. The leaks are very sparse and her numbers could change. But I will talk about her overall kit. So the main thing you need to know about Hu Tao is well she's a pyro character and the name of the game is pyro impact so you know she's going to be strong right she's going to at least be able to proc reactions you know like vaporize melt all of that right she's going to be able to proc reactions and do damage because she is pyro that's just inherent in her <laughs> in her being a pyro character right so that's one thing another thing you need to keep in mind is that she may come across as a little gimmicky now that is because when you use her ultimate it takes away some of your hp and then once you're underneath 50 percent hp she does more damage so the lower when you have your hp low she's going to be hitting like crazy which means she is going to have survivability issues more than likely if you're keeping her at that low HP threshold, which can make her cover with the Xiao, right? Because Xiao has survivability issues because he is squishy and his ultimate drains HP. Both of them are HP-based characters in a sense, right? Except that Hu Tao gets stronger as her HP is lower and Xiao just loses it, right? So if you want a character who's kind of high risk, high reward, you get them low HP, they do much more damage, and you just kind of, you like that, you know, you like the being on the edge of your seat when you're playing, right? Then Hu Tao could be cool, but some people might consider that clunky, right? Well, you know, some people might think, hey, this is fun. This is, you know, this is risky. I feel excited playing, you know, playing with low HP like that. Uh, other people will say, this is clunky. This is annoying. I don't like having low HP. I hate getting one shot, you know? So it's that's completely up to your playstyle, right? Again, if you like Hu Tao as a character, absolutely go for her. She's a very, very cool character. She has a great Japanese voice actress. There's a lot of stuff, you know, good stuff going for, you know, Hu Tao. Don't get me wrong, right? But just keep in mind that she may come across as clunky to some people. But yeah, guys, that is it for today. 
If you agree with me, you disagree with me, let me know in the comments which character you're going to be pulling for. Let me know down below, and I'm sure to read... I try to read as many comments as I possibly can because I just love seeing what you guys have to say about stuff. It really makes my day just scrolling through all the comments on, on, you know, on my videos, so please be sure to leave a comment, smash the like button if you enjoyed this video, and of course, subscribe for more content. But yeah, guys, that's it for today. Kai Zucker out. Peace and booyah.